Hello everyone, hope you are loading well. So in this video, we'll discuss the third problem of lead code by weekly contest 111. Again, it's a medium level problem, but I would say relatively on the easier side. The accuracy is low because of, uh, we'll, we'll see why the problem is sort of a bit confusing if you've seen the problem statement, uh, but the solution is on the easier side. You just need to observe a couple of things and this will become an easy problem, right? Let's see what the problem is asking us to do. The name is sorting three groups. It says that you are given a zero index integer array of nums, uh, nums of length n. Now each number, basically the numbers are from zero to n and each number is, uh, basically these numbers are divided into three groups. So each number belongs to either group one or two or three. Now remember some groups may be empty, right? Now you are allowed to perform this operation any number of times, right? Which operation we need to perform? Pick a number x and change its group, right? More formally change nums of x to any number from one to three. In short, there are three groups. All the numbers belong to either of the group. In one operation, you can choose a number and change its group. That's what it means to say, right? This all thing is saying the same thing, right? Now, why do we want to do this? Because we have to build a new array. How do we build a new array? The numbers that you have in distinct groups, right? Sort them. Sort the numbers in group one. Sort the numbers in group two. Sort the numbers in group, group three. Now append them. These are the sorted numbers of group one. These are the sorted numbers of group two. These are the sorted numbers of group three they should when you append them they should be in non-decreasing order that's what we need to do so we need to perform the minimum number of operations of moving the elements to different groups right possibly none if if you do not need to perform any operation that's well and good because we need to perform minimum number of operations right uh, so what we have to do we have to do uh, these things because when we sort the individual groups and we append group one, then group two, then group three, remember this is the order, then we get a non-decreasing array. Okay, return the minimum of operations, right? Let's see this, let's see this. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. Index number zero basically belongs to group two. One belongs to group one. This belongs to group three. This belongs to group two. This belongs to group one, right? Let's write it, it another way. In group 1, we have 1 and 4. In group 2, we have 0 and 3. And in group, group 3, we have only 2. What we have to do? If we sort this, we get 1, 4, 0, 3 and 2. If you append it, what do you get? You get 1, 4, 0, 3, 2. This is not non-decreasing. We want non-decreasing. That means ultimately the order should be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's perform this operation, right? So it says change num 0 to 1. That means the 0th element should be moved from, right? Should be moved from group 2 to group 1. So 0 should come here. Okay. So the sorted format will become 0, 1, 4. Remove this. This is how it looks like 0, 1, 4. Again, if we append it, we do not get it in, uh, what do you call it? Non-decreasing order. Change its group. Element 2. This one is it right now is in group three. Let's move it to group one. So this becomes zero, one, two, four and change this element as well. Element number three is in group two, move it to group one. So we perform three operations and the groups are zero, one, two, three, four. Group two is empty. Group three is empty. So ultimately when you append them, you get a non-decreasing array, right? This was the only possibility in this configuration. So we did that. Let's check for other configurations, right? So in group one, we have element number zero. Let me write the indices zero, one, two, three, four, five. So in group one, you have zero, you have three. In group two, <clears throat> you have two. In group three, you have one, you have four, you have five. Okay, let's see how we can perform these operations. Okay, it says change nums one to one. This is nums one to one. That means from group three, move it to one. From here, move it to 1 okay change nums of 2 to 1 that means this element should be moved from group 2 to group 1 remove it it's right the configuration looks like 0 1 2 3 this guy is empty and this has 4 and 5 now if you append them 0 1 2 3 this is empty and this is 4 5 we get non-decreasing array so the minimum number of operations needed is 2 all right similarly if you see here so what happens uh, in group one i have nothing in group two i have zero one two three 
in group 3 i have elements 4 and 5 no need to perform, perform any operation append this append sorted format of this sorted format of this you get non decreasing array and hence zero operations are needed right so now if you look into the constraints the number of elements you have is just 100 and groups are 3 so if you just talk about brute force approach right no fancy things needed here if you just talk about the brute force approach brute force approach will look like this just see my elements are 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 dot 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 up till 100 they can be right or 99 whatever you call it now a brute force approach says that since the constraints are low why not divide the why not check all the configurations right what i mean to say that let's have some elements in group 1 some elements in group 2 and the remaining elements in group 3 since the elements are in order what i mean to say if 0 to x are in group 1 then x1 x plus 1 to y will be in group 2 and then y plus 1 to n will be in group 3 or n minus 1 since this order is intact now this problem becomes very easy let me show you how suppose these are my numbers so i can try different configurations that means let's these numbers let let me put these numbers in group one let's draw a line here let's put these numbers in group two and let's put the remaining numbers in group three right this is just one of the possible configurations i am showing so these are two vertical lines these two vertical lines uh, we can we can try out different combinations uh, to form different type of groups like for example zero one two three four dot 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 maybe both of them are here meaning group one and group two are empty all the elements are in group three so remove this line it comes here it says that group 1 is empty group 2 has only 0 and group 3 has all the remaining elements remove this it comes here it says that group 1 is empty group 2 has 0 and 1 group 3 has the remaining elements remove it this says group 1 empty 0 1 2 in group 2 and then the remaining in group 3 this is one of the possible configuration right remove this line as well my friends uh, let's put two lines here so it says that all that all these elements in group one means zero to three group one four five group two and the remaining elements in group three. this is one of the possible configuration like one of the possible ways to solve this problem you you generate all the possible configurations and for each configuration just check what are the minimum number of operations needed now how do you check the minimum number of operations uh, so suppose zero to three just a second yeah it says that zero to three should be in group two run a loop of hundred again there could be multiple ways to solve that as well i'm just telling you multiple solutions so from 0 to 3 just check how many elements from 0 to 3 are in group 1 okay how many elements are in group 1 suppose out of 0 to 3 um, i have only element number 1 in group 1 right so that means 0 1 sorry 0 2 and 3 are not in group 1 but i want them in group one that means i will bring them from either group two or group three wherever they are present so ultimately these are the number of operations i need to perform so that elements zero to three are in their correct 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 group right similarly for four to five i need them in group two i'll check how many numbers out of four and five are in group two right the the numbers which are not in group two i'll bring them either from group one or group two and similarly for group 3 right this is just one of the possible some solutions you run an n square loop y n square loop because you have two vertical lines right these two vertical lines will take n plus one different positions right one two three elements so one position two position three position four position that is why for n elements n plus one different positions of these two vertical lines so big of n square to basically form different groups right this is one of the solutions but let's talk about a better solution right let's talk about a much 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 better solution why much better because uh, the second the solution that now i'm going to discuss is a standard one right uh, this is how you reduce problems to some standard problems this is how you learn the things right so let me let me do those things so those things are let me yeah let me start like this i have some numbers in group one some numbers in group two some numbers in group three my aim is to put these numbers in sorted format then these numbers in sorted format and these numbers in sorted format so that they are forming non-decreasing uh, they are basically non-decreasing order right this is what i need to do now let's see the initial configuration right i have some initial configuration that every number in, is in some of the groups right let's do that so suppose uh, let me take yeah let me take this configuration 1 3 2 
one, three, three. I am just taking this configuration for simplicity, right? Now, what happens is this zero, one, two, three, dot, dot, dot. These are the actual numbers, and these are the groups, right? These are the groups. Again, this is just to confuse you. I, I personally feel this is just to confuse you. These are the numbers. These are the groups, right? So what I can what I can do is if I just form the if I just find out the longest increasing sub sequence, right? Longest increasing sub sequence of this array. Why I will find out this? Okay, why I will find out this? Just see, the longest increasing sub sequence will tell me that. The elements are already in increasing order, right? Because the indices are the numbers and they are already increasing, right? But the LIS will tell me that, suppose, suppose, in this case, what happens? What is LIS? So just see, what is the longest increasing subsequence? It is, this is 1, 2, 3, 3, okay? So I hope this is, yeah, 1, 2, 3, 3, no, one, 6 elements, so 1, this is three, this is two, this is one, this is three, this is three, one, two, this. This is the longest increasing sub sequence that I can form, right? Other ways, obviously you can use this one. One, three, two, one, three, three. This is also one of the possibilities. But what this guy is saying now, what this guy is saying, LIS is giving me a hint that, look, this is element number zero. This is in group one. This is element number two. This is in group three. And this is element number. This is the next element. Now, this element, where should this element be, right? The group number of this element, right? The group number of this element should can't be greater than the group number of the previous element, right? Getting it? Another way to look to this problem, right? The group numbers of the group numbers of the numbers should be non-decreasing. Should be non-decreasing. Why? Because what I do, the problem is saying, put all the numbers in sorted format from group 1, then group 2, then group 3. So ultimately, these all are in group 1, these all are in group 2, these all are in group 3. Maybe empty, but doesn't matter. So I am solving this problem in another way that whatever is the initial configuration, I'll find the longest increasing subsequence. Form the lo Find the longest increasing subsequence. That will tell me that this is the longest pattern, right? And you just need to tweak the elements which are not part of LIS, right? Because I need to perform the minimum number of, minimum number of operations. So I'll find the maximum number of elements which are in their correct position, right? Why correct position? Because suppose an element here is in group 1, here it is in group 3, 2, here 1, here it is in group 3, then 3, then 3. Let's take an example, right? What this configuration tells me that, okay, this is in 1, this is in 2, this is in 1, these 3 are in 3. Now the only culprit here is this guy. Why? There are two possibilities by the way. Either this guy is culprit or this guy is culprit. This guy is culprit because here I have group 1, here I have group 2. Now again I come and here it is group 1. So either this guy should come in group 1. So this will become 1, 1, 1, 3, 3, 3. Or this, if I treat this guy as culprit, so this guy should come in group two. So this becomes one, two, two, three, three, three. Just another way to look into this problem. Why? Because these groups are for some numbers and those numbers are actually indices. Getting it? So I'll simply for find the LIS. LIS will tell me that, okay, what are the maximum number of elements which are in correct order? All right? Correct order. Like for example, these three numbers are in group three, right? These three numbers are in group three. Now, obviously, I'll not change these numbers to put them in group two or group one, right? So that is how it helps me. That is how it helps me. Okay. Now comes the question: How to find the LIS? This that is a very standard problem, right? These are the number of elements you have. Uh, this is the LIS. Now, a single element is always an LIS, right? LIS is longest increasing subsequence. Okay. So maximum LIS is one. Now, what I do? I find the LIS for index number i. So to find the LIS of index number i, what you do? You, you cal already calculate the LIS of previous indices and you just check that. For example, this guy, if this guy is less than or equals to this guy, that means I can add this element to an element to the, to the subsequence, which was ending here, right? This is basic, very standard algorithm. You can just search for LIS. That is what I have done here. To calculate LIS of i, I'm running loop from zero to i. Just see, this is less than i, okay? 
and if the element at ith index is greater than or equals to element at jth index so lis of i is equals to math dot max of lis of i like whatever is the current value and lis of j plus one means whatever is the length of the sequence ending at j plus one because i'm adding the ith element right because the condition is being satisfied now why i'm taking max lis because in in the same loop i just want to find out what's the maximum length of what's the lo la longest increasing subsequence length right because i'll take that part and out of n elements those elements are in their correct order and the minimum number of operation means that the remaining elements will just change their group doesn't matter in which group they go there could be multiple configurations but again n minus max lis just see max lis equals to whatever is the value of max lis and lis of i why lis of i because this is the value that you have just tweaked na? so maybe it becomes larger than max lis simple very very simple solution so the first solution was something that comes to everyone in in, in everyone's mind right but this is more of a i would say um you know standard way i would say reason being uh, you convert a given problem into a very very standard problem so that is the beauty of this um this this solution that's what i feel but yeah do let me know if you have some any other thought or rather if you used any other way to solve this problem do let me know uh, because we all learn from each other so yeah uh, and also i hope you learn something new from this video so do support it by giving up a thumbs up do subscribe to the channel as well in case you have any queries related to the solution mention that in the comment section i'll leave it on each one of them thank you take care bye bye